good morning and welcome to today's session today we are going to discuss the second important mixture model namely Dirichlet mixture model today's agenda first of all we will discuss some preliminaries related to Dirichlet distribution definition of Dirichlet model derivation of Dirichlet mixture model and extension of this Dirichlet mixture model into Dirichlet multinomial mixture model and finally its applications our goal is to generate a most general inference under fragile conditions. In the previous lesson, we have discussed the Gaussian mixture model. Gaussian mixture model is considered as the most desirable model. Everything is normal, then we mix all the normals into a supernormal distribution, something like that. It is so straightforward and most desirable even in the sense of classical, classical statistics. Okay, but here the situation is totally different. We have some irregular distributions. We are trying to mix these irregular distributions so as to model it into a mixer distribution that will have, that will possess all the good qualities of uh, sub distributions. That is the idea. For an analogy, I give you an example of investment portfolio. Suppose uh, we are going to invest in a share market. There are a lot of uh, shares available in um, a market. They are listed in um, NFT or some some of them are not listed by SEBI and some, uh, there are a lot of things. The investment portfolio is decide which type of uh, stocks should be selected in uh, what proportion and how we will bring everything into our portfolio. This is an investment plan. So our investment plan is our mixture model and investment in a different category some some people are interested in debentures fund some people are invested in um, some uti uh, some uh, such like uh, institutions some are invested in um, telecom industries uh, like so and so our aim is to maximize the profit so as to decide an investment portfolio or maximize for profit but we have to investment our fund into different area or different different uh, subcategories. Okay. Another interesting example uh, that we can experience in, in our life in uh, many many uh, many many years and many many time. But um, recently uh, there is no chance uh, for such an experience because of the COVID-19. Uh, there is no marriage functions are usually happened. So consider the marriage of a rich man. The marriage reception is arranged in a very big hall. There is no seats specially reserved for anyone, but he arranged a lot of counters. Suppose there are 20 counters. Each counter serves different types of food items. For example, counter 1 serves only vegetarian items vegetarian salads and second counter serve only non-vegetarian spicy items chicken mutton something like that and third counter serve only rice items white rice ghee rice which it uh, then um, our uh, kerala rice lot of rice items the next counter serves Chinese items and so and so we got 20 counters and last counter is as usual desserts there are 20 times to types of desserts arranged there but there is a condition you have to select a counter only once and there is no second service only first service you just take your plate and you can go to any of these counter and collect the food item only once from one counter you can take any amount no problem then you select any seat and sit there and start your fight with the food that's all when the gate open what will happen as we expected everyone will rush to the plate counter fortunately the plate size is very large we have a very large uh, large plate it can contain about three kilos of food that much sizes we just rush to different different counter and collect food items 
when we move on to our vegeta- non vegetarian counter there are fish item chicken item mutton item etc etc then you can choose any of the counter again you have the enough uh, permission or you know enough right to choose different food item from each counter no problem then what is the minimum amount minimum amount is zero that means you are not choosing that you can choose the full thing into uh, your uh, plate no problem so from zero to the maximum size that's all but we cannot fix what is uh, what will be the amount of uh, chicken you are going to take there is no such restriction if you are that much interested in chicken you will take more pieces no doubt okay so each counter is actually a dirichlet distribution each counter is a dirichlet distribution dirichlet distribution is actually an extension of a beta distribution we will see that so there are 20 counters so 20 dirichlet distribution now you can choose the counter yes or no the counter number 1 yes or no choose or not choose like that so that is a binomial distribution so we mix two distribution now we have 20 dirichlet distribution and also a choice distribution that is a binomial distribution so you take different dirichlet distribution and bring it through this uh, bernoulli distribution or binomial distribution so you collect the food then come back to the seat then keep your plate in front of uh, the, uh, uh, on the top on the top of uh, the table that is in front of a person opposite you but unfortunately the person opposite you cannot see your face why you collected that much food item from all the counters and at present in the plate there is a hill there is a hill like structure what is the shape of a hill it is again a mixed gaussian hill is actually a mix, mixed gaussian multi dimensional gaussian so this is a wonderful analogy that means if you try to mix a large number of um, dirichlet distribution through a bernoulli distribution ultimately it will come to a gaussian distribution it's an interesting observation so mixture of dirichlet distribution with a large number leads to a gaussian distribution okay so a wedding reception may be a dirichlet dirichlet mixed distribution each person need to be a gaussian distribution because we have to be normal in all sense so that uh, every person is a mixed gaussian that's good thing but the marriage function need not be a dirichlet mixed distribution in that case many people may suffer even the person who eat all this food may suffer okay now we are going to explain the importance of dirichlet mixed uh, mixed distribution with the help of this motivation in bayesian inference models for purely mathematical reasons the prior distribution this is a prior distribution should be chosen as dirichlet distribution this is a hint in bayesian cases we choose the prior information set or the prior information distribution as dirichlet distribution what is the reason because then the posterior distribution is easily calculated as another dirichlet distribution or dirichlet mixture that means if the prior distribution is a dirichlet automatically the posterior distribution also dirichlet in such situation the prior and posterior have the same nature then it is called a conjugate pair or the posterior distribution is a conjugate prior of the likelihood distribution actually when we look into this bayes theorem it is fully understood look this is our prior distribution p of theta under this evidence what happened to theta that is here this theta p of theta is changed to p of theta given by under this evidence what happened to theta that is posterior distribution so in some cases some exceptional cases like um gaussian distribution if the prior is gaussian automatically the posterior is gaussian the prior is beta function then definitely the posterior is beta function a multi dimensional beta distribution is dirichlet distribution so if the prior distribution is dirichlet see dirichlet then automatically the posterior distribution is also dirichlet distribution that means you need not to calculate that posterior distribution mathematically 
we can even avoid this normalization fashion factor or this uh, calibration factor this calibra calibration factor is keeping here to make this p of theta by given y as a probability distribution to make it uh, some one that's all so it will minimize our calculation even in the numerical cases it minimize the uh, calculation okay so dirichlet mixture models are very good starter or very good prior distributions because whatever be the likelihood function this p of y given theta the posterior distribution is again the same structure okay now we will move on to some preliminaries preliminaries are actually definition of beta beta distribution and also the dirichlet mixture and dirichlet distribution that's all a dirichlet distribution is a multi dimensional extension of the beta distribution that is the main point dirichlet has no stand alone existence dirichlet is actually a multi dimensional extension of beta function this beta function is defined as gamma of alpha plus beta divided by gamma of alpha into gamma of beta into theta raised to alpha minus 1 into 1 minus theta raised to beta minus 1 don't worry about this long expression it is very simple and look beta function or beta distribution has two input namely alpha and beta this alpha and beta are the limits the lower limit alpha and upper limit beta now right side expression contains this alpha and beta many times let me start with expression gamma of alpha plus beta since alpha and beta are constants alpha plus beta is again a constant so this entire expression this entire fraction is again a constant now what is this what is gamma function we know gamma function is a special function but if we are trying to interpret the meaning of gamma function in words it is very simple gamma function is generalization of factorial gamma function is generalization of factorial nothing else nothing more suppose n is a number integer integer number counting number then gamma uh, in the, the n factorial we know what is n factorial n factorial is the multiple the, mul the multiple the product of all numbers from 1 to that particular number for example 5 factorial what is 5 factorial we start from 1 and multiply up to 5 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 720 like that but if it is a fraction what we would do the problem is the looping process is mo moving like this p is equal to p into i that is our formula already p is 1 then we multiply by next number 2 next increment number 3 next increment at number 4 etc if it is a fraction we cannot do like that if that n is a fraction then we use it gamma function nothing more so if alpha is equal to 1 and beta is equal to 1 what happened gamma of 1 plus 2 gamma of 3 gamma of 3 is 3 factorial don't worry if all then here gamma of 1 gamma of 1 is 1 factorial gamma of 2 gamma of 2 is 2 factorial so this entire expression becomes a constant so that much simple gamma of sum is there divided by product of gamma functions gamma of alpha plus beta by gamma of alpha into gamma of beta gamma is a generalization of factorial then theta is to alpha minus 1 so theta is the parameter here theta is the parameter then theta is to this lower limit minus 1 into next parameter is 1 minus theta but we consider it as a single parameter function why because this 1 minus theta can be calculated from theta we need not to keep this 1 minus theta separately once you have theta we can calculate second parameter as 1 minus that parameter theta into sorry not power th beta minus 1 so this is our beta function this is one dimensional feet beta function if we extend into k dimensional or m dimensional whatever it is it becomes a dirichlet distribution so what is dirichlet distribution that is next statement a particular dirichlet distribution represented by a vector alpha bar actually it can be uh, represent in form of simplexes dirichlet distributions are expressed in the form of simplexes simplex of one dimension is a line simplex of two dimensions is a triangle like that okay so this vector alpha bar with the positive components has probability density given by p of x p of x is equal to z into product over i x i raised to alpha i minus 1 this i ranges over 
the number of act, number of components in that Dirichlet distribution. Okay. Then what is he said? He said it is actually an expression of this form. Gamma of sum here to uh, alpha and beta are the only two parameters. If it is a multi-dimensional, there are many alphas, many betas. Then take the sum of all in the numerator. That is gamma of sigma over i alpha i divided by product of individual. So this product can be generalized in the form of product expression pi. Pi over i gamma of alpha i. So this is nothing but generalization of this expression. Now we are going to express theta and 1 minus theta in two different variables. That is xi. x1 is the first parameter, x2 is the second parameter like that. For each parameter, the power is alpha minus 1 and beta minus 1, some constant minus 1. Generally, it is denoted by alpha i, alpha i minus 1. So, a higher dimension or multi-dimensional beta distribution is called a Dirichlet distribution. Why we are using beta distribution? There is another interesting question. We know only about the bounds, like in our previous example. Suppose we are going to a counter, there is, a, there is Amul ice cream is there. Either you can choose zero ice cream or the full packet. Nobody can uh, fix how much um, scoop of ice cream you are going to take. It may be of different form. If you consider different people to have different distribution, all possible ways, but it, is, it, it lies between zero and one continuously. There is no break. Such a distribution is actually beta distribution. Beta distribution is uh, a mathematical function that represents a continuous representation of uh, representation within bounds. That, is, that will be within the bound. But remember, it is a probability distribution, so area under that curve should be 1. Area under that curve should depend. That is the total probability equal to 1 condition. Okay. Now the sum of these parameters alpha i is called the concentration parameter of Dirichlet distribution. This alpha, the sum is called concentration parameter. In some special problems, we will use this uh, concentration parameter, the concept of concentration parameter, especially in quality control, quality control area. Suppose we are going to test the quality of water, quality of acids, something like that. Then the quality may lie in between uh, some uh, pH values something between these pH values. Its probability will be distributed in multinomial distribution. That multinomial distribution is actually here um, Dirichlet distribution. Okay. Now we move on to the formulation of Dirichlet mixture model. It is actually the ditto steps of Gaussian mixture. Step one is, so we start with some basic assumptions and form the probability function P of Xn. That's all. The basic assumptions are taken from the k-means background because in the most worst condition, a k-means clustering can be uh, done with the help of this uh, Dirichlet uh, mixture model. In the case of um, a well-behaved k-means cluster, we can use Gaussian mixture. We have discussed in the previous session. So we start with the same background, k-means background. Suppose that there are k clusters, that means we are going to assign a separate Dirichlet distribution for each clusters. Then I take the sum of this Dirichlet distribution are the, as the um, Dirichlet mixture. That's all. Then for each component Xn, it is a Dirichlet mixture, a Dirichlet distribution. So P of Xn is equal to product of sum alpha i by gamma of sum alpha i divided by product of alpha i. Sum gamma of sum divided by product of individual gammas. Xn raised to alpha i minus 1. Now we are trying to formulate the mixture as the weighted average of individual Dirichlet. That means the weighted average of this, this some sigma of P of Xi into some constant Wi. That weight should be in the probability distribution. That is the only condition. But we are going to add some qualitative measurements to that weight. That is the key idea. If that weight has some property, then it holds a particular distribution. If that weight is only a Bernoulli distribution or binomial distribution, then it is called a multinomial Dirichlet mixture model. We are going to do that. So second step is uh, defining a latent conditional. As in the case of um, Gaussian mixture, we start with a latent variable z. The dz is equal to z1 is to z2 etc. z k is the latent variable that decides a particular observed variable observation or a sample will go to a particular cluster. Then we define this pi k. Pi k is the probability that the given sample belongs to the kth cluster. P of zk is equal to 1. This zk is the um, actually an indicator function. This indicator function says that whether that sample x goes to kth cluster. 
its probability is called to pi k. So pi k is the probability that a given sample goes to kth cluster. It is also known as the mixing coefficient of the Dirichlet. In the case of Gaussian also it is called the mixing coefficient, no problem. Here zk is the indicator function, this zk is an indicator function for the kth cluster. Then what is this? A given sample goes to kth cluster, that's probability is we have to find. A given x goes to kth cluster is probability. Probability that a given sample go to kth cluster. We calculate this for all clusters, then we choose the highest probability. Then assign that particular sample into corresponding cluster. That's all. That is the real clustering in uh, distribution method or soft clustering method. Then we are defining this P of Zn given Z. Under this latent variable, Xn belongs to kth cluster. Xn belongs to kth cluster. So that is the richer distribution Xn given alpha k. Now we define the marginal probability for Xn. So we use the concept of marginal probability p of xn is equal to sigma over k is equal to 1 to k p of xn by z k into p of x z k. Then p of z k is pi k. We replace that. Then p of xn given z k is nothing but Dirichlet distribution. Then we resubstitute for Dirichlet distribution here. This is p of x. Now we define p of x. p of x is the conditional of the remaining thing. That is x is a vector contains x1, x2, etc, xn. So p of x is probability for this joint distribution. That is actually product. Product n is equal to 1 to capital N because I choose this n is capital N here. n is equal to 1 to capital N p of xn. Now what is p of xn? Now look back. p of xn is this sigma. This p of xn is actually the Dirichlet, the sum of Dirichlet distribution or this is a mixture. We add that mixture here. So probability for that vector form is equal to this product of this mixture. Product of sigma k equal to 1 to k gamma of sigma alpha k by product gamma k into xn raised to alpha k minus 1 pi k. This is called the PMF of Dirichlet mixture model. P of x equal to product of product of sum of these distributions. You see, pi k is actually mixing coefficient. Now look, this pi k is the probability that that sample goes to kth cluster. That probability will be replaced by a multinomial distribution, then this called Dirichlet multinomial mixture model. Now look into that. See, this is the PDF of our Dirichlet mixture model, p of x equal to product mixture of or the sum of Dirichlet distribution with the weighing, co weighing coefficient pi k or mixing coefficient pi k. Now we replace this pi k. Pi k is the probability that the given sample belongs to kth cluster. We replace it by a multinomial distribution with the parameter theta that is pi k is replaced by p k of theta. This distribution is called Dirichlet multinomial mixture model. The one more m here. Why this m comes here? This m is here because of this pi k replaced by p k of theta. Pi k is the probability that that sample point belongs to kth cluster. But p k of theta is the probability that say multinomial distribution selection probability from which Dirichlet that sample comes. From which, which Dirichlet distribution that sample will come. So this model, this distribution is called a Dirichlet multinomial mixture model. Then uh, that model which possesses this uh, Dirichlet multinomial mixture distribution is called DMMM. It's a wonderful representation of a Kruske by John Kruske. There are uh, two major representations. One is this Kruske graph. Another one is plate model. In our prescribed textbook by um, Christopher Bishop, Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning, they are using um, the plate model. But for better explanation, I am choosing this Kruske model. See, as in our marriage reception example, this is a counter. This counter is selected by our categorical distribution or multinomial distribution. We can choose any counter. You just rush to different different counters, then collect the food items into our plate. Finally, what we have? A heap pile of food, like a 
hill hill structure that is normal distribution so this is a nice representation for crush uh, dirichlet mixture that leads to a gaussian mixture so if the sample size is very 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 large then the dirichlet uh, multinomial mixture becomes a normal distribution structure okay thank you thank you very much